directly from the YouTube channel of former New York State Governor Andrew Cuomo, and I found his channel a couple months ago. He has archived every single one of his Rona pandemic emergency press conferences and more. I mean, there's thousands of videos. I made several videos about it, and I'm going to watch all of them eventually. There's also some whispers about him claiming that he's going to maybe run for New York City mayor, but that aside, my name's Eric. This channel is called Report and Opine. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. I'm absolutely begging you. I'm begging you, please. Come on, please. <laughs> because it would help me a lot and it would cost you nothing. But if you wanted to help me even more and spend a little bit of money, go ahead and buy my book, New York City 2020, Gotham Unglued on Amazon.com. That link will be in the description. This video is titled Governor Cuomo to President Trump. You denied reality. And I just recently watched another video of Marjorie Taylor Greene hassling one of Fauci's aides, and he's sitting there all smug. He's not even talking into the mic because he knows nothing is going to happen to him. And some uh, several other, I think, Republicans were questioning him as well, but it's not going to matter. But this is a walk down memory lane as I was sort of, you know, remembering all the, the emails and the source of the virus and all that absolute nonsense. But this was him claiming that it was all real. What, what was the date here? It was from July 20th, 2020, where he wants President Trump to know that he denied reality. Andrew Cuomo is telling President Donald Trump that he denied reality. And look, it is the federal government because it is the federal government. Sometimes first I mean, first up, it's the exact same playbook every single time. Gavin Newsom said the same thing. Yeah, well, uh, that's true because it's true. Folks say, oh, they're just cleaning up this place because all those fancy leaders are coming into town. Um, that's true because it's true. And they just expect you to wear it. But I think, you know, people are snapping out of it. It is what it is. And this has been gross negligence. They have been denying the reality of the situation from the beginning. The nursing home killer is talking about gross negligence. It doesn't exist. It's going to go away. By Easter, we'll reopen. When it gets warm... And of course, this is crazy. But of course, he never wanted it to go away. From the early days, February, March 2020, he was saying, Oh, it was going to be like, oh, it was going to be like the Spanish flu of 1918. Obviously, and I said this years ago that he was setting it up so that he could do whatever he wanted for an indescribable amount of time. Now, of course, he had to step down because he was playing grab ass with the intern. And I think that wasn't really the reason he was forced to step down. I think and there's, I mean, a number of reasons, right? Obviously, the nursing home stuff and all that. But I think and this is maybe conspiratorial, but there was one video of him saying that, well, if you got the shot, then you shouldn't have to worry about other people that didn't get the shot, and that wasn't enough, so they had to find one way or another to take him out. It will go away like it's a miracle. It didn't go away. There was no miracle. You denied reality. It didn't go away. There was no miracle. Yeah, and this is from July 13th, 2020. So it was supposed to go, I mean... It was all fake from the start, but he wanted it to go on forever. And so in a couple months, it, the, the hype hadn't died down. Well, of course, we weren't close enough to the election at that point. But oh, it, it didn't go away. It's still here and everybody's going to die. And if they don't, I'm going to make sure that something bad happens to them. This is their political agenda over public health policy. That's what this is. This is politically inconvenient in an election year. So deny it. Yeah. Except you are jeopardizing public health and you're losing lives. Yeah, this coming from the guy who literally, um, I think only a couple months after this, right? I don't remember the exact timeline, but stuffed all those old people into the nursing home, the nursing homes, and spread, white, spread like wildfire, apparently. But I just, look. And a lot of people aren't going to like this, but I don't think it was really that bad. I think it was something far more sinister, but I could be wrong. By your denial and your political agenda. And then when the federal government didn't step up. Okay, hang on. I'm sorry, but this is just insane. He's talking about a political agenda. This is the same guy who on top of 
everything else said that wearing a mask was about respect, which obviously, I mean, there's talk about saying the quiet part out loud. I thought it was about health and safety, but you're saying you should wear a mask because it's about respect. What he tried to, he tried to turn not wearing a mask into the brand new version of a MAGA hat. And it seems crazy now, but at this point in time, New Yorkers were absolutely rabid. They were even wearing gloves. I mean, this was insane. People were walking huge circles around me, right? New York is notoriously a crowded city where you could just pass people shoulder to shoulder. Of course, you were going to kill somebody if you walked around Trader Joe's without a mask, but somebody would come close to me and then like take this huge loop around as though I was this some sort of weird contagious monster because I didn't have a mask on. And I also made the joke a long time ago that, you know, just because I dress this way, I don't expect you to judge me. But of course they did. And I had no choice but to leave. It's a completely different story. Up and handle this. This was a federal crisis. Why is New York state or the state of Georgia or the state of California or any of these states handling the COVID virus? It's a no, no they, <laughs> they absolutely weren't. When you say handling, you mean just foisting heavy handed tyranny on the citizens because at that point in time they were scared enough to buy it. You guys were the ones that ruined everything. You guys were the ones that shut down businesses and schools and put police tape around jungle gyms for kids and took rims off the backboard. You guys made it political. National issue. The president did a federal emergency declaration. You know what a federal emergency declaration means? It means a federal emergency. You know? oh, oh, super, super deep, hard hitting. And uh, I think Trump gets a lot of backlash for all of this Rona stuff. But I guess you have to give the left wing radicals, the Democratic regime, a little bit of credit for putting him in that that horribly uncomfortable catch 22. What was he supposed to do if he shuts everything down? Then they say, oh, well, oh, you know, he killed your business. He caused inflation. There's all oh, millions of jobs lost. That's all on him. But if he did nothing, they would also say, well, he wanted people to die and he didn't he didn't do anything when the virus was floating around the ceiling of restaurants, but not at the table. Who's in charge of federal emergencies? The federal government. That's why they use the word federal in all of those expressions. I was in the federal government. When there's a federal emergency, it's the responsibility of the federal government. Wow. Yeah. Spoken like a true scholar, just like Kamala Harris and using a very similar, of course, the, the language. I mean, it's the exact same playbook, but the language is similar. The hand gestures are, are similar to let you know that he's very serious and you got to listen to him. Otherwise, you're going to die. They just abandoned their post and said it's up to the states. And by the way, they got offended when the states asked for any resources or help from the federal government. If they're not going to step up and address a problem that helps every that hurts every state in the United States, then what is the point of the federal government? <laughs> I mean, if you don't see that as your role, what is the role? <laughs> and not the president. <laughs> okay. They put up the photo of Tony Fauci, right? We just talked about this. I just watched a video about it. Go ahead and watch it. But oh, President Trump is attacking science, right? And Fauci notoriously said that I am the science. Anybody who's looking at this carefully realizes that there's a distinct anti-science flavor to this. So if they get up and criticize science, nobody's going to know what they're talking about. But if they get up and really aim their bullets at Tony Fauci, well, people could recognize there's a person there. So it's easy to criticize, but they're really criticizing science because I represent science, that's dangerous. To me, that's more dangerous than the slings and the arrows that get thrown at me. Like, this is crazy. President is attacking science. <laughs> what a surprise, no surprise. He's been attacking science from day one. And this was obviously all part of the plan, right? A, a bigger, a larger, look, I don't know exactly how all of these weirdo cabals work but it was happening in a whole bunch of westernized countries 
right, where they were trying to, they were shutting things down. None of it made any sense. But this was the plan to get rid of Orange Man from day one is voice this, this pandemic on everybody. And then anything that happened would certainly be the fault of Donald Trump. And unfortunately, it worked. The denial of reality was to deny science. The denial of reality was to deny science, right? And these are the same people. You can go to New York and they have whatever, 187 genders. And then they want to talk about denying reality. You got rat face Fauci up here. I am the science. And he's done that from day one. At the end of the day, science trumps politics. Politics does not trump science. You don't defeat a virus with politics. You defeat a virus. Yeah, and, and you, you also don't defeat the sun monster with money. This is all completely crazy. But, but again, for the millionth time, the projection is real. They are saying everything they are doing out loud, out loud and projecting that across the aisle, even though it's clear. I mean, anybody with two brain cells to rub together at this point in time has to see this, right? I mean, there's no way you can look at this. Same thing with Eric Adams and kickback Kathy Hochul saying several racist things and saying, oh, well, you know, whatever. We're Democrats. I knew where our heart was. It's different when we do it. Iris, by using science and medicine. That was true from day one. President now says his own health officials are lying. Absolutely, because they were part of the regime, right? They're the ones that told you, you don't even have to pay rent anymore. Yeah. Oh, and it, there's all the all of these clips of people saying, well, you know, the, the, the new a news person said that, uh, you know, the weather is getting hotter. And it's like, bro, you can't just quote somebody who is on your own team as a source, like it's clear. Oh, well, even even the CDC says uh, even the CDC was lying. Yes, obviously. Right. I mean, okay. I, I, I digress. This is just incredibly triggering to watch this man who, for the record, too. I didn't think it could actually get worse. I for several years, I blamed Andrew Cuomo with literally ruining my life and shutting down the job I worked at. Right. I mean, it was all pretty good. But. Now, it, just to watch this, watch this takeover in real time, and people thought it was real then, but it's laughable now. It is beyond parody. About the virus. His own CDC health officials are lying about the virus. Absolutely, yes. Well, if the president is telling the truth, you know what he should do? He should fire them. Yes, he should fire them. Correct. You know what I would do if I believed my health commissioner was lying? I would fire him. He's right about that. If I said in this room, my health commissioner is lying about the coronavirus, you know what your first question? Yes, they are all lying, right? Like this, that I think they've gone through like two or three health commissioners in New York since since this point in time. And yes, they've all been liars and they should all be fired. But unfortunately, they are part of the regime. The CDC is part of the regime. And Trump, I guess, is not in that cabal. So that's why they hate him so much. would be governor. If he you say he's lying, how do you not fire him? How do you keep him in charge of health policy? Because that was another catch-22. Yes, he's, he is correct. They should all have been fired, but it was another catch-22. Catch Could you imagine if Trump had fired Fauci or Trump had cleaned house at the CDC? Then they, they believe them. They are on their team. So they it, it's a, either way you slice it, they're going to blame all of the problems on Trump. But I guess for better or for worse, Biden has been so bad that people are starting to snap out of it. Right. I mean, you just you push too far. You overplayed the hand. You say the person is lying. Because someone is clearly lying to the American people. Yes. And you guys were lying the entire time. That's why it's so insane to watch you say this from the other side. I mean, it's all completely backwards and upside down. And people are dying 
because uh, I'm sorry. I can't, this is so difficult to watch. But here, of course, is the card that they always. I mean, there's several cards that they always play. They bat around the top of the order. They have like nine or ten talking points, and they just circle through them. But if you don't do what they say, of course, somebody is going to die. That's always in there. Trump's COVID scandal makes what Nixon did at Watergate look innocent. Nobody died in the Watergate scandal. Thousands of people are going to die in this COVID scandal. And that is all the difference in the world. You look at the facts, the facts clearly demonstrate Trump was wrong from day one. And New Yorkers have been right. And this is July 2020. So it hasn't been that long at this particular point in time. And he is just spewing absolute nonsense that I guess people bought. And this should have been enough to get him fired. But he was... He had he was he was forced to resign because of something completely different, apparently, allegedly. From day one. There's no argument. There's nothing to tweet about. The facts are in. The numbers are in. Look at the number of bodies. Look at the infection rate. New but that, that's all completely that's all completely made up by you guys. There's quite literally nobody who is not part of this regime to double check any of that stuff. So you can just say it and people have to wear it. New York's numbers have declined while the nation is going up. New York is down 70%. These other states up over 800%. Florida up 1300%. Oh yeah yeah yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure that is just a coincidence that he would he would call out Florida. Who's right, who's wrong? What's there to argue about? Those are the numbers. Tell me the numbers are wrong. Yes, the numbers that you guys made up are completely wrong and false and phony, and used as a cudgel to beat people into submission. It's all across the country, and it is undeniable. And it's now a threat to the state of New York. Yeah, right, bro. This is crazy, and I'm wondering if he claims that, or I mean, he hasn't said it, but there's some articles floating around out there, I think, about how he might run for New York City mayor, but has he changed his stance on any of this? Probably. I know your little brother Fredo did. Your little prop comedy partner said, oh, yeah, actually, now that I don't work for CNN, it, you know, I, I could use this this Joe Rogan horse dewarmer or whatever it is. Would he stick by all of that? And then there's other clips of him saying that, no, no, well, we didn't force anybody to do that. We we foisted it on the businesses and they uh, they said that, you know, you couldn't go to work if you didn't get the shot. And the businesses said, you can't come in if you don't prove that you got a shot. But me, as the, as the governor of the state, as a federal employee or a state employee, I guess, I didn't do any of that. I didn't, I didn't force, force anything or foist anything upon the citizens of New York. 